So how big a farm have you got here at Half Adams College? We manage um, about 1,700 acres, um, split up into a various um, various blocks. We have the main farm, about 500 acres surrounding the college, and then various offline areas, um, adding up to the 1,700. And how much of the farm is used for teaching students, and how much would you say is, is a commercial enterprise? The, the foundations of all the enterprises is essentially commercial. Uh, first and foremost, we have to be able to operate um, sustainably, and that means that each enterprise has to be commercial. At the same time, though, we have to deliver the resources that are needed for teaching and research. And that will mean that there are very few areas um, across the whole farm that aren't, to some degree, being utilised for research or teaching or demonstration. We basically give the, the cows a choice. Indoors they had TMR, outside they just had the grass. What we found was that the cows actually spent just over 90% of their time inside. Uh, we think that they spent their time inside because of the TMR um, and the, the feed was the biggest difference between the two locations and that was um, our biggest finding. We also found that milk yield influenced choice, so cows with a higher milk yield spent more time inside. Um, and we also found that the weather did also affect choice, so on days when it was raining, the cows were more likely to be inside. Also, humidity. On days when there was a high humidity, the cows were more likely to be inside. And we think this could also be correlated with rainfall. You've got a new dairy unit put in. Can you describe that a little bit to us? The unit is, um, is, a, is a green field site. It's, um, it's built initially for 400 cows. Um, the infrastructure, though, is capable of um, supporting 600 cows ultimately. At the moment at Harper Adams, there are, there's approximately 2,500 students, um, and that is divided up um, largely between de degree students, HND students, and um, students on the um, extended foundation course. And how many of those students actually do hands on agricultural courses? Um, I'd say approximately about um, 500 students, and that is broken between the HND course, which is more sort of practical and a degree a little bit more sort of technical and theory uh, although along with the practical as well. The, the facility well, ultimately is to, to house 400 cows but at the same time we've, um, we've tried to integrate as many um, elements of technology to improve the efficiencies of operations so things like um, automatic um, scraping systems, um, the use of uh, automatic systems for pushing feed up to the cows. So we have um, we have a, a robot which um, runs around put, uh, every three or four hours pushing feed back. The parlour itself is um, equipped with all sorts of automated data collection equipment, um, particularly crucial where we're doing trials related to milk yields or milk quality. So we've got um, yield monitoring, uh, quality monitoring. The, the cows themselves uh, were in a number of transponders. Um, cows around here are wearing neck transponders, that's part of a piece of work we're doing um, for a company looking at um, ultrasound microphones, measuring rumination rates. Uh, the cows also wear pedometers, activity meters, um, that we can relate to um, either health issues um, or heat detection. Um, other cows will wear transponders which give them access into dedicated feed areas that allows us to monitor uh, feed intakes, particularly of forage for, um, for trial purposes, uh, for feed related to nutritional type work. Yes, I mean, first of all, we're thrilled to be, you know, to be asked to open it because um, it's a significant investment, a really large investment. And the way that you know, education is structured today, they've got to design this unit that is as commercial as possible to make sure it pays for itself, but also it's got to be designed to aid the teaching and, 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 and research purposes. So in this Greenfield site, they've, um, they've done a tremendous job of that. And um, I, th I do think the vision from when this was planned some years ago, when the milk prices were at their lowest, um, confidence was, 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 was fairly low, in the, very low in the industry at that time. And, and also, um, before people started talking about, well, actually we need to talk about production agriculture, we need to start talking about science and technology and how we can make sure we can produce more food. Um, so it now seems when we open it today, it's very much with the mood of the times. It's needed to train the next generation uh, much needed next generation of students. The parlour choice was something we spent a lot of time thinking about. Um, it was quite a critical element of the whole, whole development. 
Um, initially, we were really looking at herringbones or um, um, uh, rapid exit herringbones right? and um, conventional row trees. The difficulty with both is they didn't necessarily meet the requirements we wanted. We wanted cows that could be um, milked rapidly and efficiently, but equally it was important to us that um, we were able to demonstrate the milking process and both the herdsmen and um, visitors to the unit could see the entire milking process taking place. So it was rather late in the day that we came to the whole notion of um, an internal rotary. Uh, that allows the operators to work on the inside, the cows never leave the operator's site, they're running across the parlour, um, and it means that viewers standing in the viewing area above can see the entire operation going on. Uh, for, so for us it was a natural choice of, a, of um, an internal rotary parlour.